Hey, what is happening? What is going on? Welcome to the channel. So this is going to be a bit more of a basic video. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the camera and all the settings and just make you a master at using the camera in Blender. So what I'm going to do is first thing, I'm just going to show how to add a camera. It's very easy. Just go shift A, go down here to camera, boom, and it adds the camera into your scene. And then you can see like that, then you can go R and you can rotate it like that. And can see that's your camera you can go r again you can rotate it up and down or you can do it like this okay that's your camera in blender and that's how you add it and obviously you can move it if you go to z you can go g and you can bring it like that or you can just grab it okay now let's get a little bit more in depth into camera settings i'm going to open up a scene and we've got a scene like this i'm just going to go here Okay, and now you can see here we've got a camera. I'm just going to go in like this. And here's a camera. Same thing. If you want to switch, so if you're moving around and you want to go back to your camera view, you just click here. And it locks back to your camera. And you can just move around again. And if you want to go back again, like that. Let's say you want to change your camera. You want to get your view like this. So you want this now. Just make sure your camera selected. Hit Control Alt 0. And now this is your new camera view. It moves the camera to there. Okay, I'm going to go back to front view. And now we're in the camera. So how do we move the camera like this a little bit? So you can click there. So this is your camera. When your camera is selected, just click here. And now we've got all these different types of camera settings. The camera shaker file is an add-on, so don't worry about that too much. I'll make a separate video on that. But... What I'm going to do is you can see now we've got perspective and orthographic and panoramic. Okay, you're not really going to use panoramic too much. You're going to use other perspective or orthographic depending on what kind of scene you want. So perspective is normally good for scenes like this. So like realistic kind of scenes and that kind of stuff where you want like you want to show a product or you want to show a scene as realistic as possible. And then orthographic, I click there, it changes it. So for this scene, it won't work. But if I go here, just give me a second. So I've got this scene. If I click on my camera, you can see I am in orthographic mode. Okay, and I go like this. You can see this is the scene. So here's the scene. And if I click on the camera, if I go orthographic, if I go to perspective, it's not going to look that good. You can see now you see this. So orthographic for this kind of abstract kind of you know, if you're making like a wallpaper or something like that, and then you can move it in and you can move it out. And then you can shift it X and Y. And it basically, it's basically orthographic view. And what I would say is if you're going to do like these kind of detail abstract kind of things, orthographic is a pretty good way to go with your camera. But if you're doing like normal kind of scenes, then I suggest just stick to perspective. So I'm back here in the scene. Let's go here. And let's go back to camera. So we're in the camera. We're in the camera now. So now focal length. Like if you know a bit about photography, the closer to zero you go, the wider your your view. So you can see there. And you can go all the way to like there. That's like a wide angle. And then obviously the more you go in is the more zoomed in it will be. You could also do this, so you could go to like 30, 30 millimeter and then go to Z, click on the camera and then go G and zoom in like that. That's also fine, completely up to you. It's, uh, yeah, you can do it however you want, whatever is easiest for you. Now, you can leave it in millimeters and then now shift X, so shift X, you move it on the X axis, axis. And then let's just go back to zero. And then Y up and down, just like that. So you don't really have to worry about clip starts and end. It's just more, just like your field of view and how far you can see. It's not too much of a big deal. So now if I click on camera, sensor, auto, horizontal, vertical. I just keep it at auto. And then size is the same as basically 
as you mean. So I wouldn't really play much with this. I would just use the focal links. Safe areas, I wouldn't worry too much about it either. Background images, you can add an image, not really too much. Viewport display. You can use composition guides. So you can go like that. And that helps you get like rule of thirds. If you like to do photography, you know, if you've got an iPhone or you get that grid, you can use that. You can use center. You can use diagonal. So yeah, you can use the ratio. And it just helps you compose your images a little bit better. You don't need it, but sometimes it does help. And then depth of field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another render to talk a little bit more about this. And you can see, let's go here to layout, go to camera view, and go like this. Now you can see, look at this. It's got this blurry, and then it's like in focus there. And this is all about depth of field. So let's just go to cycles. You can see it's got that blurriness there. Let's go to our camera. So we in our camera, go there. And you can see I've got depth of field enabled. So if I turn it off, you can see this becomes now clear. So this all becomes in focus. If I bring the depth of field back, this becomes blurry. And then what you do is you set a focal point. So you can click there and you can find what you want. Or you can just exit like that and you can click on it and you can find like that you just click there and then this becomes blurry that's where your focal point is and you can change your aperture so if you bring this to like 10 this will become over here will become more more in focus so you can see there 10 i'll bring it to like 16 basically not even using depth of field it's like you may as well just switch it off so if you go to like two you can see this becomes nice and blurry and we can go to somewhere like this so you can change your camera so go click on camera control alt zero and now this becomes blurry in the foreground and in focus in the background so you get that nice like you know when using those expensive lenses when you do photography you get that nice depth of field the blurry foreground and that looks nice you can do it in blender so you use that and then like i said camera shaker file it's an add-on it's just more for animations so if you like doing like animations and you want to do like a certain kind of shake it it lets you do that but yeah i'm not gonna go into it it's, it's it's not really involved with the camera in my opinion it's more for animations i'll make a separate video on that plus it's actually an add-on so you'll have to download it and it is free but it doesn't come with blender just pointing it out but uh, yeah hopefully you enjoyed the video make sure you subscribe hopefully you learned a few things a little bit about the camera yeah Check out Blender Kit, link in the description. Great add-on, probably the best add-on in my opinion for Blender. Check out my Patreon, supports me in the channel. And otherwise, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. See you in the next video. Peace.